Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. If you believe everything has changed for you, come and give God praise and glory in the house of God. Because truly, they have changed. Praise God. And you'll never be the same again. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. So good to be back home. Actually, I just arrived into the country this morning. <laughs> just to make sure that I make Sunday service today. So, flew from uh, Canada to UK yesterday and then from UK overnight into Lagos uh, this morning. Hallelujah. And so, I'm excited to be back home. I really prayed nothing goes wrong with my flight, you know, to take off from London yesterday night. And I'm glad nothing went wrong because I've been away from home for some time and I just badly wanted to be back. Praise God. So I bring you greetings from Pastor Jumake, who is still away. Um, praise God, ministering in a left time in Winnipeg, Manitoba, two days ago. Uh, she's ministering there over this weekend and then uh, she'll move on to UK during the week and preach at our London church on Sunday before she returns home. But um, I bring you greetings from her. It's a joy for us to uh, travel the world, travel the nations of the world together. Actually, when she went to host the women's retreat, uh, she returned to the country on a Monday morning, and Monday night she was on her way to the U.S. to preach the Women's Conference of Dominion International Center. It just pastored by friends of ours, Pastor Stoye and Wumi Ademola in Houston. So we great, give God the glory for how he is using her in the places she's been. And we know God will follow user till she returns. But it was good we were able to hook up abroad. She said, you must not go back home. We must be together at anniversary time. And she sure enjoys we being by ourselves at anniversary time. Praise God. So just that uh, bad day is also anniversary. So I have conceded to anniversary as the primary celebration every year. Praise God. The early years of our celebration, people will even had to remember that it was a wedding anniversary. It was all about my birthday, so I felt it was not fair. Uh, we had to balance it out. But I want to thank you all for all the overwhelming celebration. One of the beauties of social media is that even when we are not around, we are feeling your love wherever we are. Through Facebook, Instagram, uh, even Twitter, um, any other platform there is, I'm not there, so I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> if anybody said happy birthday on Snapchat, I wasn't aware. <laughs> and so there was one, somebody said I should get on one time called, uh, I think it's IMO or so. I entered into it within a few minutes, people were rushing at me, connecting with me. I just deleted the app and left the place immediately. I said, if you're not careful with social media, you won't have time for your Bible anymore or for anything else except social media. But we thank God for it. It has its advantages. It keeps us connected. Uh, and so I tried my best. If I didn't reply your personal message, I know that I tried. Because I really do try to reply people's messages personally. And I'm sure some of you were surprised I replied you personally. I really do try. From phones to WhatsApp to, uh, you know, to Instagram, I try as much as possible to reply everybody. So... Just know I tried everything in my power. <laughs> Praise God. But I want to thank you very, very much. I felt your love, and my mom and I are most grateful uh, for your love. Praise God. Well, we have in the service a woman of God who is not a total stranger to this house. I know she was a blessing to us. January last year, I think. Or was it this year? Oh, this year, January this year. Reverend Ayo Gamra, let's make her feel welcome to the service this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, prophetess of God, tremendous gift of God uh, to the body of Christ. And um, uh, she came into the country a few days ago also. And we're just so grateful to God to see her today. She misses Mama. Uh, she said she really wanted to see her. She thought she would see her in church today. But um, she saw me. Praise God. <laughs> he that has seen me has seen the Mama. Praise God. <laughs> or she that has seen me has seen the Mama. <laughs> We also want to make welcome a man of God who's been a blessing to us in this church, Pastor Deepwa Laka from Star Assembly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pastor Laka. Such a joy to see you. 
I don't know why they decided to go and sit you far away there. Can you bring him closer at least to Pastor Gabriel here? Praise God. I want to see your face closer here. <laughs> so the anointing can drop on your head direct. I, I guess you have to prepare the head to receive it. <laughs> Pastor Laka and his wife are uh, just so dear to Mama and I. Praise God. Is that the water of the apostle or something? It's prophetic water or <laughs> something. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I've been away enjoying, so I didn't have a proper message to preach this morning, so I'm trying to greet so that the time will go away. So. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you all once again for all your, all your show of love. Particularly the men's fellowship, I want to thank you for that special presentation. You are leading by example, so the women can learn next year to, to, to copy you and copy your excellent example. The men are great leaders in this church. <laughs> Hallelujah. The men are the real deal, I'm telling you. Uh, so thank you, guys. When, when Mama comes, we'll enjoy what you have given us. Praise God. Love this part treatment. Amen. Nice massage. Not to straighten all the, you know, praise God. What did you say? You just allowed them. You should have done your way. It wouldn't have stopped their own. <laughs> The men just the, the men carried the day, period. They showed example. Amen. Come on, clap for the men. Clap for the man. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you for those lovely cakes. They sure look very beautiful. Thank God for Sister Lighter and her creativity with those cakes. I sure love them. Praise God. And thank you, Sister Iwai. Those are some very powerful things you did on social media to celebrate us. Thank you. Praise God. Sister IY is just awesome with media. Amen. All right, are you ready? At least for 10 minutes of exhortation. <laughs> Let's turn in our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Praise God. Amen. 2 Corinthians, did I say chapter 2? Okay, it's okay. But let me read verse 14 because we are going to get there. And then we are going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verses 3 to 5. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Let's read the next two verses. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who have been saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are bound through Christ. Hmm. I love that scripture. I want us to also skip down to verses 21 to 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Somebody say guarantee. I love that very much. All right, Father, we look up to you today and ask in Jesus' name that in the next several minutes that we'll be examining your precious holy word, that the anointing of your spirit will be upon me to teach it and will be stirred up within your people to explain and expound it to them also. We do ask that in Jesus' name, the entrance of your word will give light and give understanding to the simplicity of our hearts. We do pray that the reality of the word will be will dawn on, upon us, that the Spirit of God will engraven these words on the tablets of our hearts in such an indelible way that we are not going to just be hearers, but we are going to be doers of the word. In Jesus' name, and somebody says, Amen. Amen. All right. In all of Paul's epistles, we see various revelations of who we are as new creations in Christ Jesus. The work of redemption is amplified throughout all the epistles. And I like 2 Corinthians chapter 1 because... In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, it starts out with a message of comfort. And what he said is, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, 
Father of mercies, God of all comfort. Father of mercies, God of all comfort. Father of all kindness, benevolence, and, and compassion, and God of all comfort. Uh, who comforts us in all our tribulation. And I want you to notice that the new creation has comfort in all his tribulations. Hallelujah. Philippians 1, 29 says, Unto us it is granted on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but to suffer for his sake. That you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, you will certainly suffer certain things. Especially persecution. You are going to see at times your family rise against you because you are standing on the word. You are going to see colleagues at work rise against you because you are standing on the word. There are going to be neighbors that are going to hate you because you are standing on the word and you are identified with Christ. And then the world system will oppose you. Satan himself will oppose you and throw all manners of fairy darts at you. And challenges will come at you. But in the midst of it all, never ever forget that the God of all comfort is your God. The Father of mercies is your Father. And that it is characteristic of him to comfort the new creation in all his tribulations. Amen. Not some of it, all his tribulations. Who comforts us in all our tribulations? There, there are no tribulations that God can handle. And there's some other ones that he cannot handle. There are no situations he chooses to handle. And then some other ones he chooses to ignore. There's absolutely nothing like that. He is with you in everything you are going through. Now, hear this. There is this employment of the word, because when he uses the word comfort here, he employs the word parakaleo in the Greek. And the word parakaleo is from the same root in which we find the word parakletos in John chapter 14. In John 14 verse 15, there Jesus himself, before he went back to heaven, said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you what? Another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Now, the word comforter there is parakletos. That is the comforter who carries out the parakaleo. Who, who carries out the comfort. Now, those who know parakletos means that it does not just mean comfort in the sense of encouraging somebody, consoling somebody. There's more to it than that. Because uh, the the para, para there means one called. Kletos means alongside to help. It, together it means one who carries on the course of another and helps him. The very root of it in the employment of that word, the creation and the usage of that word in the Greek started from the judiciary. When a person has a case to answer before the magistrate, out of fear, out of trepidation, out of slowness of speech, out of personal deficiencies, he may not be able to express and articulate himself effectively in court before the magistrate. So, it gave birth to the employment of the paracletes, the paracletos, these people who come. They enter into the dock. They ask for the permission of the person, the accused, and the permission of the magistrate to help the accused argue his case or de defend himself. So that is the paracletos. Today we call them advocates in court. They are the ones who enter into the dock or make appearances on behalf of clients to defend them. We call them lawyers. At times we call them solicitors and advocates. One who carries on the cause of another and helps him. The lawyers of today get powers of attorney from their clients to represent them. And at times I'm used to, the, to opening the, the newspaper and seeing something like article claims, article claims the election was rigged. By the time I read the body of the story, Atiku did not say it directly. The lawyer is sent to court, said so. But when the lawyer says so, Atiku has said so. When your lawyer speaks, you have spoken. That lawyer, as it were, unites with the client. And they become one. So, when you read in the scriptures, and it says, Blessed be the God of all comfort, and the Father of mercies, 
who comforts us in all our tribulations. Uh, what he's saying is, who carries on our causes in every situation in which we are. Who unites himself with us. <laughs> I am not alone in the trouble. I am not alone in the need. I'm not alone in the problem. I'm not alone in the challenge. I'm not alone under the accusation. I'm not alone in the difficulty. I'm not alone in the persecution. You need to understand that the new creation man, the moment he became a new creation, ceased to be alone anymore. The eternal presence of the almighty God has become the portion of the new creation. Say it out loud. Say, I am not alone. God is with me in every situation, in every circumstance, under any condition in which I find myself. I am not alone. Come and say, my trouble is God's trouble. My problem is God's problem. Christ is united with me against the devil, united with me against sickness, against diseases, against my challenges, against my needs, Hallelujah. I am not alone. The parakaleo is with me. One who takes on the cause of another and helps him. One called alongside to help. He is with you to help you. And you are never alone. <laughs> it's the, the fans of Liverpool that say you will never walk alone. Once you become a Fan of Liverpool, you will never walk alone because there are plenty of them. But I also know that it is even more so if you're a fan of Chelsea. You will never ever walk alone in your life. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> Amen. Even when some people don't have any arsenals left in their arsenal, except name. God is still with us. His heaven is painted blue. Just look up to the sky. <laughs> I love the message translation. Listen to it. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 5. All praise to the God and Father of our Master Jesus the Messiah, Father of all mercy, God of all healing counsel. You see, message calls it healing counsel. Uh, this counselor who is bringing healing to you in the situation and circumstances in which you found yourself. Of course, the word comforter, one of the meanings is counselor in the Amplified Translation. Counselor. And you know they call lawyers counsel. You know. So he calls him healing, God of all healing counsel. And then he says, he comes alongside us when we go through hard times and before you know it, he brings us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. Look at your neighbor and say, God is there for me. <laughs> it is the heritage of the new creation. The new creation will never walk alone. From the moment you gave your life to Christ, there has come into your life an abiding presence. He said, another comforter that he may abide with you for how long? Forever. Constantly. Day and night. In the mire, in the clay, in the trouble, in the trial, in the, in the daytime, in the nighttime. He is always with us. And he is not with us to be passive in our lives. He is active in our lives, helping us in every situation. That's why if you know who he is and you know how to activate his help in your life, then who is that person raising his voice against you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Who is rising up against you in your place of work? Who is that lecturer threatening you won't pass except you sleep with him? <laughs> Do they want to die? If you really understand who you are, then you will understand that whoever is challenging you is challenging God. New creation, you are never alone. Never alone. 
And so he says, comfort us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort others who are in any trouble. So you need to understand that the fact that you are going through what you are going through is guarantee that you will come out of it and you are going to help somebody else come out of their own too. <laughs> He's even given you a ministry before you came out. Because he said he comforts us. Paul says for them, he, for himself and his associates, that they were, they were going through everything they were going through for the sake of the people they were ministering to. And that is it for all of us. Hallelujah. So I, let, let me just com complete the reading in the message translation. He said, we have plenty of hard times that come from following the Messiah, but no more so than the good times of his healing comfort. We get a full measure of that too. Full measure of healing comfort. Full measure of help from heaven. The tribulations come, the persecutions come, the trials come, the challenges come. But by the time you look at the help of God, you will know that the help comes much more than the troubles do come. Are you listening to me, somebody? Your Christian life or not really a Christian life where your challenges are more than your testimonies. Every challenge is an opportunity for a testimony. Can I hear somebody say praise the Lord? This thing is going to work together for your God. That's why he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience. And, and it says, and let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire lacking nothing. In James chapter 1, verses 2 to 3. Count it all joy. Tap your neighbor and say, count it all joy. Throw a party. Celebrate. Because you already know how this thing is going to end. It's going to end in praise. It's going to end in celebration. It's going to end in a testimony. God cannot be with me and then I fail at the end of the day. Everything the devil means for evil in my life, God works them together for my good. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. Now, skip over. Let's go to verses 21 to 22 now. And I want you to begin to see how his presence in your life operates. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God who has also sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So, we've got the Holy Ghost, the Paracletos as a new creations in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit inhabits us. The Holy Spirit resides within us. The Holy Spirit is always with us to help us. And there are four things that God has done to us by his Holy Spirit. The first one, he said, is established. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. He who establishes us, to establish is to get rooted. To establish is to confirm. But I want you to notice something. Young Christians, especially those of you who just gave your life to Christ. He says, he who establishes us with you you see, your spiritual establishment is always in connection with the body of Christ. The new creation, the mystery of the new creation is the mystery of the body of Christ. And the body has many members, not one person. This idea of I am born again and I'm just on my own. Uh, 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 it's my salvation Christianity is between me and God. There's nothing like it. There is no complete salvation without God connecting you and in, connecting you with the body and integrating you into the body of Christ in a functional way. That's why every evangelism that does not end up in, uh, in, in adding somebody to a local church is not a complete evangelism. Notice the words of Jesus in Matthew 9. Verses 36 to 38. Matthew 9, 36 to 38. Please put it on the screen for me. Matthew 9, 36 to 38. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were what? Weary and scattered. Help me, somebody. Like sheep having no shepherd. So his compassion was because they were scattered and weary like sheep having no what? Who knows another word for shepherd? Sorry? Pastor. So he was moved with compassion because these guys were scattered abroad as sheep having no pastor. Verse 37. 
He, then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. When you hear the word harvest, what is, does it tell, tell you? Evangelism. Souls. The souls are plenteous. The, the, the harvest is truly plentiful. This, the task of evangelism is plentiful. But the laborers to do this evangelism are few. Verse 38. They therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Why? Why does he want the harvest to take place? Let's look at verse 36 again and see the why. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. So the purpose of the harvest, the purpose of the evangelism is to bring the souls under the shepherd's care. To bring the souls under the pastor. Until a soul is fully under a pastor, he is not truly, fully one unto the Lord. It's like somebody who gets married and there is no consummation. Marry, marry, the wedding ceremony has different aspects to it. So, I mean, when they come to church, I've joined several people in this church. I will say, well, you're face the congregation. Ladies and gentlemen, the youngest couple on the face of the earth, Mr. and Mrs. Ajangbadi, and then they raise their hands. Hey, everybody clap. Oh, the youngest couple on the face of the earth. But I heard about a couple like that. Two years after they were married, no consummation. The lady was rigid and frigid. No consummation. I heard that my brother packed his bags and escaped after two years. I said, he has the fruit of the spirit called patience. He has far, 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 far more patience than I do. I can't imagine getting married to Pastor Jumaker 27 years ago and waiting two years. We were already, already almost born into ashes before. We said, I do. You now hold me for another two years. What is that supposed to mean? That's why you're not only 24. Now you, Sabio, everybody has his threshold. Praise God. <laughs> Some people handle it. Now, 38, they sit there, nobody, 40. I respect them like no man's business. I don't understand them. Because I don't understand them. At 40. Eh? No wife, nothing. Eh? I don't know what they are doing in secret, though. Because uh, all I just know is that the Bible says, if a man cannot contain, let him. I, so when I see somebody who can contain at 38, 40, ah, I respect them more. Because at 24, I couldn't contain anymore. That's why I got married. So you now imagine me now get married then. Two years later, no constitution. The devil is a liar. <laughs> now, the truth is that from what we know in scripture, the wedding is not complete without that aspect of it. It is not. That is what it is like. That I said, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I depend from my sins. It's not complete, sir. Until that establishment. In that establishment, you are connected to the body of Christ. He who establishes us with you and has anointed us. To anoint is to smear himself on us. That smearing transforms us. Smearing, when you smear a surface with something, with probably jelly or something, it takes on the color, the appearance of what it has been smeared with. So if you smear a wall with a green paint, it looks green. Is that not so? When we are anointed, we look like God. Smeared with his presence. Smeared with his power. The believer is not an ordinary human being. There is a transformation that takes place. The anointing makes you look like God. The anointing transforms you into another man. Let me hear somebody say praise the Lord. But there are two more things I want you to see here. The third one he says is that he has sealed us. He said, who also has sealed us? Hmm. Somebody says sealed. And this is where the eternal nature of our salvation comes. I know it is a very big controversy in the body of Christ, eternal security. Eternal security says once saved, forever saved, no matter what. And it is rooted in scriptures like this. And it is, for me, I believe it is very true except... 
We are a person. I do not believe God overrides the human will. So I believe we are a person who says, I do not believe in the cross of Christ anymore, yes. Then that is what the Bible refers to as the sin that is unto death. In 1 John 5, 21, in Hebrews chapter 6, that is what it's referring to in verse 4, as it is impossible for those who are once enlightened, who have tasted of the, who have tasted of the heavenly gifts, who are made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and who have tasted of the powers of the world to come and of the good word of God, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. I believe these are people who are saved. Some theologians don't believe it is possible at all because of their revelation of this powerful, the power of eternal life and of this seal. Well, whatever your persuasion is, this is not a morning for controversy. I have my position, you can have your own. But I know that seal is a sign of authority. If we are sealed, the presence of the Holy Spirit says that God's authority is over our lives. God cannot, I cannot be under God's authority and be under Satan's authority at the same time. Hello, somebody? Talk to me now. I said, can you be under two people's authority at the same time like that? Can a woman be under the authority of two men at the same time? It is not possible. That's the way, way it is. I can't be under the authority of God and be under the authority of the devil at the same time. I can't be blessed by God and be cast by the devil at the same time. I don't care what the generational curses are. I have a new lineage and a new ancestry as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Oh, 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 glory be to God. I'm the seed of Abraham, sir. When they tell you that there's a curse in your family, ask them which one? The original or the, 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 the one that has passed away. Because when the Bible says, oh, you are a new creation, all things are passed away. Your former ancestry has passed away. All things have become new with your new ancestry that you have in Christ Jesus. It's a blessed ancestry. It's a blessed family. Glory be to God. I reject the curses of my natural ancestry and I claim the blessing of my spiritual ancestry and as I claim the blessing of my spiritual ancestry and affirm it and believe it and declare it, all the relics of my natural ancestry will fall away. There are those who teach you that, look, because your generations worship the idols and they've contracted your family to idols, that those idols have a right to operate in your family. Don't you understand? I'm in this world, but not of this world. According to Colossians 1, 12, I've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. <laughs> there, is a, there are exemptions to the rule. I have become an exemption. The new creation exempted me from participating in the curse of the family. I've been exempted. I'm no longer one of those who participate in such curses. No! I stand on the authority of the word of God and I reject the curses. Because many of you have been believing the curses and you've refused to reject them and embrace your new identity, those curses are still functioning in your life. It is called cheating. Satan is cheating you out of your redemption realities. Hallelujah. Abraham was an idol worshiper, sir, before God called him. Why were the generational curses of idol worship not operating in his life? He was so blessed. He said, unless that you renounce those curses, where did he renounce anything? All he did was to believe God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and the power and the force of righteousness destroyed all the relics of idolatry. It matters what you believe. The force of righteousness is stronger than all those other negative forces. The force of sin and its consequences. Never ever let anybody persuade you that you are cursed. You are too blessed to be cursed. Too blessed in Christ Jesus to be cursed. So you don't understand, Pastor. All the women in our family, they are not married. And I'm not married. It's because you've believed with them. That's why you have been participating with them. Exempt yourself from today. And reject what they are saying. And stand and affirm the word of God concerning your life. And watch your own testimony change. You will lead them out of trouble. You will lead them out of bondage. You are about to break through. And be a difference maker in your family. That lead that has been placed on your family. So that people never go beyond a certain level is broken today. Yeah. Come and let me hear you believe in amen. Yeah. A seal is a stamp of security. 
when something is sealed, it is secure. So certain things, when they are sealed, it's not easy to break open the seal. It is security. The seal secures it. Certain documents, once they have been sealed, it's a sign of authentication. Glory to God. Security. Your, the Holy Spirit is your security for heaven. You know, for as long as he is there, you will go to heaven. How can I, will me and the Holy Spirit go to hellfire together? <laughs> the Holy Spirit cannot be in my life and then we go to hell. He is my security for heaven. The third thing that a seal means is a seal is a stamp of ownership. A seal on a document authenticates that document as proceeding from the one that stamped it, from the one that sealed it. Ownership. For as long as the Holy Spirit is in your life, it is a sign of divine ownership of you. You are God's property. Now, apart from the seal, I now want you to notice this. The Bible says he has given, in the New King James Version, he calls it the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Some translation like the New King James Version says, he has given, given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So one translation says, he has given us the Spirit as a first installment. The giving of the Holy Spirit is like when somebody goes to give a non-refundable deposit. Let's imagine a product is maybe a car is three million naira. They say you have to make a non-refundable deposit of one million. By the time somebody drops one million, will he want to lose his one million? It is guaranteed that he will bring the other two million to come and complete the payment. Somebody say guarantee. Say it again. Say it one more time. So the Holy Spirit in your heart is a guarantee of heaven for you that, look, you will enjoy the eternal bliss of heaven eventually. It is like God giving you your, the first deposit of what he purchased for you. Now, in the work of redemption, when Jesus shed his blood, he shed his blood to buy your spirit, soul, and body, those three parts of you together. This was what God did. The day you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, instantly, God claimed your spirit 100%. Your soul, he didn't claim it 100%. He is getting that one gradually as you are renewing your mind. Your body, he postponed claiming your body. Though when you, at times, when you pay for something, you don't go to claim it immediately for various reasons. Maybe you don't have somewhere to put it. You know, if you, if you, like some people like cars a lot. There was one man who just bought cars and there was no space to put a new one. So he had to look for how to fling some two cars quickly so I can have space to pack the new ones that he, that he bought. Praise God. So, uh, you, so, so for various reasons, people don't claim whatever they, they buy immediately. Uh, so, so God postponed the redemption of your body to the future. Postponed it till the rapture. Praise God. But the Holy Spirit is already here. As a guarantee. Now, he is here, not passable. Romans 8 says in verse 11, If the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall do what? Quicken your mortal body by spirit that dwells in you. As the Holy Spirit is quickening my mortal body, killing infections, destroying diseases, maintaining me in soundness of health, it is guaranteed that when I die, this body will be resurrected one day. Today's divine health is the first installment of the resurrection that God already purchased for my body. And if I don't die before Jesus comes, the Bible says in one instant like this, we shall all be changed. Let me show you. Second, let me round off from 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. Let's round off from there for this service. Praise God. Uh, give me 
Give me New Living Translation. So that I don't have to explain too much. From verse 1, sir. Second Corinthians 5, from verse 1. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body. So this body is the tent he's talking about. Okay? We know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. <laughs> Glory be to God. In other words, just as I have a physical body, there's also a spirit body waiting for me. Now, look at verse 2. Let's read on. We grow weary in our present body. This is not so. We are tired. We are aging. Man, look at this 51-year-old Victor. It does not look like the 21-year-old I started pastoring 30 years ago. Man. Man. <laughs> you know, when, when we moved to, to Lagos 11 years ago, and, and I, I came with determination when we were going to get down to work in this Lagos. Very quickly, I had to come to terms with myself that, Victor, you sure don't have the energy you had as a 26-year-old man when you started Global Harvest in Ibadan. It was not exactly the same. I had to come into, I to agree that some energy has went. It's not exactly the same. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. Sure. We long for that one. That we'll have the limitations of this present one. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. We're going to have bodies. Hallelujah. But those bodies will not be like this. When Jesus shed his blood on Calvary's cross, he shed it to also buy this our bodies so that he will be able to give us glorified bodies that are like his own. Bodies that are not limited by sin, that cannot be tempted with sin the way this one is tempted with sin. Bodies that cannot be sick, like this one gets sick. Bodies that don't grow tired, like this one grows tired. Bodies that are limited by this three-dimensional world, like this ones are limited. No! We are going to have new bodies. Verse 4. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life, by Zoe, the life of God. Because that is what is going to happen. Those new bodies are bodies made by Zoe, the God kind of life. They will swallow up these ones. The Zoe will take all the limitations of this one and, and just and, 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 and change it and transmute this one into a glorified one. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, verse 5. So verse 5 now says, God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee that it will happen, he has given us his Holy Spirit. <laughs> Somebody say, praise the Lord. Come on, say it again. Say, praise the Lord. That's why Holy Spirit right now will take an ear that is not hearing him. Boom! He will open it up. <laughs> I remember... It was a St. Catherine's, Ontario. I was ministering to one white guy. The guy, he, he didn't have any faith at all. So I knew it was a journey. So I just told the people, don't worry. When I told them, can you hear anything? I can't hear anything. It's not like this one. I hear this. This one does not hear anything. Oh, my goodness. I said, okay, um, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, so I spoke a word. He said, he said, I can hear it. He said, I hear from this one. So he claimed that he was hearing it from the other one. So I said, it should block that ear very well. So I spoke again. He said, it is the other one that was hearing it. I said, no problem. I said, just be calm. Okay? Don't look at me. Just hold the microphone. Whatever I say, say it. I'll be looking into the front. Don't look at me. So I kept talking and gradually I was moving away from him and moving away from him till I was at the end of the wall on the other side. So I said, open your eyes and look at me. I said, are you hearing from the other ear? No, no, I hear you from this ear. Look at this one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What can't the Holy Spirit do? A service in which one brother was talking about the fact that he had the metal in his leg. You that has been fixed there and I won't let him bend. And he was bending and couldn't feel the metal anymore. What are you talking about? Where did God put the metal? I don't know. But the Holy Spirit removed it and put bone instead. God is, there's what? All the miracles we see that are taking place right now, they are just guarantee. That look, the time is coming when we will have glorified bodies in the future. But in the meantime, let us enjoy the first installment. I said, let us enjoy what? The first installment. 
this presence of the Holy Spirit in us is guaranteed we can live in divine health right here and now. Do you know that there is no miracle you ever got from church that you got from another Holy Spirit different from the one inside you 24-7? <laughs> I say, ah, everybody has healing anointing. That healing anointing is the same healing anointing that you carry around you all the time. But your faith is in reverend. That God has anointed reverend. But you don't have faith that God has anointed you also. If only you have faith that you yourself you are anointed, you will lay your own hand on your head and your headache will disappear. You will lay your own hand on your back and your back trouble will disappear. Just, just believing Christ in you, the hope of glory. Just trusting that this Holy Spirit that is inside you is the earnest of your own inheritance. He has come to give you a taste of heaven on earth. Don't wait till you get to heaven. Start enjoying heaven from now. God bless you. Rise to your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Come and say it out loud. Say, I declare that I'm born again by the blood of Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit indwells me. And by the Holy Spirit, I am established in the faith by the Holy Spirit I am anointed with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I am sealed with the Holy Spirit who is a guarantee of heaven and of better things to come I declare right now that the Spirit of God within me imparts the life of God to me he imparts the nature of righteousness and sin cannot overpower me. He imparts divine health. Sickness cannot overpower me. He imparts the wisdom of God to me. Therefore, foolishness is not my portion. He imparts the strength of God to me. Weakness is not my portion. He imparts the favor of God to me. Curses cannot operate in my life. By the presence of the Holy Spirit, I am a supernatural person, living supernaturally. I am loving my spouse, loving my family members, loving my friends, loving my neighbors, supernaturally. I am at peace in the midst of trouble, supernaturally. I am rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory supernaturally by this Holy Spirit within me I am living beyond the natural I'm living beyond my weaknesses I'm living beyond my knowledge I'm living beyond my own wisdom I'm living beyond natural laws and I'm operating by the power of an endless life I am operating in dimensions beyond the ordinary I think supernaturally, I plan supernaturally, I execute supernaturally, I get results supernaturally, I make applications supernaturally, I get jobs supernaturally, doors open to me supernaturally. In the name of Jesus, I am attracting the people I need for my destiny supernaturally. Hallelujah! Glory! Woo! Come on, rejoice somebody. We are not ordinary people. We are supernatural people. We are loving supernaturally. Forgiving supernaturally. Hallelujah. Succeeding supernaturally. Woo! Glory! Sickness leaves your body this morning. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Diseases leave your body this morning. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I rebuke depression. Depression goes. I rebuke fear. Fear leaves. I rebuke heaviness. Praise takes over in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. 
As we're all standing in God's presence, every head bowed, every eye closed. Is there anybody who says, Pastor Victor, I'm not yet born again. I would like to give my life to Christ. Raise up your right hand quickly. Raise it up high above your head. I need to be saved. I need to be born again. Raise your right hand high above your head for me to see it so that I can pray with you. Anybody like that? I can't see any hand right now. All righty. Glory be to God. I therefore release you all into the powerful hand of the Almighty God this week. Everywhere you go, the paraclete goes with you. You will not lack help. You will not lack strength. You will not lack favor. Throughout this week, the supernatural help of God is delivered to you. As you are expecting it, so it is happening for you. Where you cried last week, you are about to cry for joy. Where you wept for sorrow, you are about to weep for joy. I declare that doctor's report that was negative last week is about to turn positive this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall not die. You shall live and declare the works of the living God. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed in your uprising, blessed in your down sitting. Whatever you lay your hands upon this week prospers. Whoever you lay your hands upon this week gets healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, every door you knock opens before you. To everything that you call, there shall be an answer. Heaven responds to you this week, and so the earth responds to you this week. I say, heaven responds to you this week, the children of men respond to you also this week. You are blessed in blessing. You will multiply and multiply. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord live.